Hey, 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 Peace and blessings are not everybody. This is your girl, The Philly Bruja, on my way to work. Uh, just a real quick morning rant. <laughs> just a little quick morning rant. But as usual, I'm going to maintain low tones because <laughs> I just don't. I just don't get too ex excited all the time. But I'm fuming on the inside a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just a, just a quick thing here. I noticed that um, <laughs> once again. Our favorite cult leader and his merry band of idiots are being detained. They're probably released by now. There's a difference between being detained and arrested, you know, but that's for a different um, video. Let's talk about this real quick. I'm so freaking tired. And, you know, I, I normally try to keep my religion and my practices um, on the low for the most part. <clears throat> but I am getting so fed up and tired of people trying to come for us. What I mean us is people who practice African traditional uh, religions. And I'm talking about my Santerians, <laughs> my Vodun people, my Palo Mayambe people, my 21 Division people. Anyone under that whole Ifi Yoruba umbrella, okay? Please stop putting this man on us. If anything, there are folks in the background who are practitioners who are literally putting a foot on this, 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 this man's head. Everything started falling to crap for him when folks like myself was tapped in. And I'm sick of people trying to say, yeah, he's over there practicing some kind of uh, voodoo. Or some of this, some of that. That's, no. A sex cult has nothing to do with African, the ATR, period. It does not. And I'm sick of people trying to put that shit on us. If anything, if he did have some sense, number one, he wouldn't have been smoking Palo, <laughs> well, trying to smoke a Palo Santo stick, okay? It's an instant. He was on there on some fuck shit. His life is falling apart. Because the spirits and the ancestors are against all of this mess. And I'm just so over it. I'm so over it. Because if you look at it, in all religions, whether bad, I mean, whether it's Christian, you Baptist, Mormon, hell. You pick one, I can pick you, you know, several different examples of a... um of a bad person you know what i'm saying hello hey catholic priest we see you <laughs> you know what i mean please stop trying to put that man on us Vodun, santeria atr it, there's nothing satanic or evil about it you know and i do and i am enjoying the fact that you know um people of color are starting to look more into it and be more open-minded to it but please I'm humbly asking folks who are all up in these um, chats and giving and they're talking about oh he practiced it no he does not he is not one of us none of him and his Barry man of idiots are, are have anything to do with us nothing they're doing has anything to do with like-minded folks like myself and if anything People like myself, like I said, is on the low, helping, trying to help this whole situation. And I'm just over it, you guys. Just a, just a quick, it's just a quick um, morning time. This is what's on my mind. <laughs> That's what's on my mind, man. You know, it's, it's please stop associating. Uh his antics over there with anything that has to do with the African traditional uh, religions, please. Appreciate it. Also, again, like I said, arrested and detained are two different things. If he was actually detained, he's probably out by now and getting deported once again. We shall see, right? We gonna see. But that's all I got for this morning. Um, you guys have a wonderful day. Peace and blessings to you all. 
or as always, or not. With that context, I'm hoping you could share with our listeners a little about Ifa Arisha tradition, mm. uh, which I suspect for many people is something they haven't even heard of, despite being, <laughs> I believe, the most widely practiced traditional African way of life outside of Africa. And, yeah. Uh, so could you just share some basics with folks? Well, I must say, let me say that in back in the late 70s, when I was first coming toward initiation, I remember uh, one of the elders said to me, he said, by the turn of the century, three-fourths of the world will worship Orisha in one form or another. You know, and I understood at that point, he said, and you have something to do with that. I thought, well, that's nice. Um, when he said that, I understood that he was saying we were moving, the world was moving toward a spirituality that had more reverence for the earth. I understood that back then. Um, in that time, I have seen this tradition grow from something that had to be kept secret, uh, that was illegal, that was uh, misrepresented as spookism into the light of day, into uh, having faced the Supreme Court and become legal, into having UNESCO uh, recognize some of our temples as global sacred sites, uh, into going from being a tradition where arrogant anthropologists who assume they were dealing with a bunch of savages wrote erroneous material to educated people who are also members of the tradition who are articulating what it's really about from the inside. So, you know, we now have intelligible material about the tradition, excuse me, available uh, to the general public. Additionally, one would think that this tradition maybe would have only survived in places where there was slavery and the conglomeration of, of African people with native indigenous people with European pagans. So certainly, certainly, the United States, the Caribbean islands, uh, Central and Southern America, Brazil especially, uh, the tradition uh, it flourishes in Venezuela, in Brazil, in Suriname, in, in uh, Jamaica, in Cuba, in Puerto Rico, in Haiti. But we also have temples in unlikely places like Israel and Japan and Australia and India and Amsterdam. And, and this is because having been made intelligible People can see the universal principles at work. They can feel the power. And it is a tradition, because Oshun is so much a queen of it, that requires the cultivation of beauty. It really does. You know, you can't build an ugly altar. Come on now. You, you can't do that. That would be an insult uh, to Orisha. But for those who are, you know, brand spanking new, the best way to explain what Orisha is, it is uh, a personification that is making intelligible to uh, human consciousness the mysteries of nature as they have been perceived for thousands of years and put in a language, both verbal and ritual, that allows us to interact with those energies. So I say to people, if I say Yemonja, I mean several things. I mean the ocean that is out there. I mean the uh, energy of nurturance anywhere in nature. I mean a body of stories and songs and dances and costumes and everything 
that uh, a number of people who serve this energy have developed over time. And I also mean um, a pre-human existence entity that lives in the waves of the ocean, you know. And what is amazing is that I can go to my altar and invoke and sing and dance and pray and be in communication with that ever-nurturing energy that we call Yemoja. I can go to the ocean and make an offering and watch the wave come in and take it or you know, have the kind of miracles that they have in Brazil every year when they do the big million people ritual for Yemaya. I can walk down the street and encounter her coming up the street in the person of that big eyed sister in the blue and white dress who's taking care of, you know, everybody's child. And um, I can experience her on all of those levels. I can read the stories of the lives of generations of women who manifested uh, her energy. It is a very different world from the insanity of attempting to live in a materialist monist mode where the only things that are real is what can be counted, put in a test tube, spent or used to beat somebody else up with. It's a totally different world. Totally different world. So I guess that that's the most that's the best I can say to somebody who has no idea because in truth what I wanna say to them is if you wanna know Yemonja, you can hear everything that I just said. But wait until you're mad at your mama or you're depressed or your child is pissed off with you and then go sit on a rock at the edge of the ocean and cry and you'll meet her. Then you'll have a direct experience of her and you'll feel what I'm talking about.